Hey guys, today we are going to have a look at fast AGP motherboards and see how much more performance we can squeeze out of our favorite retro GPUs. But first let's take a look at two motherboards that didn't make it into today's testing. Starting with the 775i65G from ASRock. This little motherboard supports fast core to dual CPUs and it is using the Intel 865G chipset. The port is using dual channel DDR400 and of course an AGP slot. I have to agree with Phil when he said, shut up and take my money. Let's take a look at our next motherboard. The 939 Dual SATA 2. It supports Athlon 64 CPUs and is based on a Uli chipset and is using dual channel DDR400. The main attraction here is support for full AGP and PCI Express slots. Now before I show you the motherboards that I did use for today's testing, let's hear what Nathan from Pixel Pipes can tell us about his experience with fast AGP motherboards. Thanks Bart. It's one thing to build a retro PC platform for an enthusiast just wanting to relive the old games they remember, but it's another to build a test platform for benchmarking graphics cards that show their best performance. With that comes an entirely different set of criteria, and not to mention challenges. For my needs, I can never get enough CPU performance, and there are a handful of late AGP platforms that can get the job done. LGA 775 is a pretty good choice for high-end AGP cards with multiple options available, but in my opinion, they all have some pretty critical drawbacks. For one thing, overclocking on these boards is extremely limited. Voltage options in the BIOS are almost non-existent, and if you want to milk the most out of your core 2 generation CPU, you'll often have to resort to soldering resistors to the board itself, or using B-cell mods, which involve taping up and bridging pads on the underside of the CPU. These are doable if you're driven enough, but it's far from convenient. For whatever reason, ASRock bestowed their AMD platforms with many more BIOS options. I'm guessing because different design teams tackled different platforms. The 939 Dual SATA 2 is a particularly awesome motherboard, and my personal favorite for socket 939. But you quickly run into performance limitations with Athlon 64 CPUs when benchmarking anything past the Radeon 9800 XT. With faster GPUs, you leave a lot of performance on the table, which is why I had to ditch it for my testing. While support for full PCI Express and AGP, as Bart mentioned, is a major plus, for me the easiest option is to use separate platforms for each slot standard to get the most performance. AMD gets the nod for AGP using the AM2 NF3 Vista, as numerous BIOS options make overclocking a Phenom 2 processor a breeze, and performance is right at the top of what's available for AGP cards. However, there does exist one elusive motherboard that could solve all our problems, the Alive Dual E SATA 2. This motherboard, like the 939 Dual, supports full AGP and PCI Express bandwidth and supports Phenom 2 processors. One platform for anything from a GeForce 256 all the way up to, say, a GTX 285 with full performance. It's extremely rare, but in my opinion, it's the holy grail for GPU testing under Windows XP, if you can find one. That's just my opinion though, back to you Bart. Thanks Nathan, and I hope you find your holy grail one day. So here's the Intel motherboard I will use for the benchmarks, the 4 core dual SATA 2. Here are some basic specifications. I use the QX9650 Extreme CPU in this board. The fastest CPU I own that would work in this board. I managed to overclock the CPU from 2.4 to 3.5 GHz and the memory from 266 to 336 MHz. Not great, but like Nathan pointed out, the BIOS is not really overclocking friendly. Our second fast AGP board is the AM2 NF3 Vista. It's based on the Enforce 250 chipset. And I used the AMD Phenom 2 965 CPU. I was able to overclock the bus speed to 250 MHz and the CPU clock from 3.4 up to 4 GHz. The memory is running 500 MHz and the Norbridge frequency 3 GHz. 
The last board we are testing is used as a baseline, the P4i65G. It's a Pentium 4 system running at stock settings. The CPU I used is a Nordwood at 3.4 GHz. I created this timeline to help you understand when all these parts were released. The GeForce 4 Ti4600 is the first GPU that I will test and was released in 2002. Followed by the FX5950 Ultra from late 2003. The Pentium 4 was released in 2004 followed by the GeForce 6800 GT. The GeForce 6 and the Radeon X800 series were the first GPUs to get PCIe support. Only a few AGP cards were still made by the time that the GeForce 8800 was released. One of the last AGP cards, and in this case the fastest, was the ATI 3850 from the beginning of 2008. It's time to look at the benchmark results. First up is the GeForce 4. Next up is the FX5950 Ultra. Next up, the 6800 GT. And finally, ATI 3850, just so I don't disappoint ATI fans. So we've seen some interesting results here. The GeForce 4 is bottlenecking the fast CPUs a lot. With the 6800 we start to see some decent performance uplift. And to no one's surprise, the Pentium 4 is holding back the 3850 a lot. But what surprised me the most is how close the results are between the Core 2 and the Phantom CPU. That's it for me today. You know what to do if you enjoyed this video and I see you in the next one.